Welcome everyone, Dr. Mandel here with you. This is going to be a very interesting topic. I'm going to be talking about uh, vitamin K2. Uh, vitamin K2 is a miraculous vitamin, fat-soluble vitamin like K1. But before we go into uh, K2, let's talk briefly about vitamin K1. Now, these are your mainly green leafy vegetables, your kales, your Brussels sprouts, your broccolis, a lot of your greens. And the purpose of vitamin K1, which has been known a lot longer than K2, is that it's known for blood clotting. And that's why when uh, people out there, or if you are taking any type of blood thinner like Coumadin or any other kind of medication uh, pertaining to blood thinners, you need to be careful not to consume much vitamin K because of the fact it's going to, going to cause clotting. So uh, anyone who is taking blood thinners before you even start trying to get this vitamin K2, which I'm going to explain to you, you need to speak to your doctors first. First, let me say that vitamin K2 is especially important for cardiovascular health. Vitamin K2 prevents accumulation of calcium in arteries and improves arterial flexibility. It also inhibits or reduces the progression of atherosclerosis, which is calcification of the arteries. So for those supplementing with vitamin D, it is critical that you add vitamin K2. Why? Uh, vitamin D is what actually helps calcium get into the bones. Vitamin D is the key player in all skeletal health in its role in helping the calcium absorb. It's all about proper absorption. In other words, we absorb more calcium from our food, which is a good thing, but equally important, it's where the calcium is going. Research shows that vitamin D does not instruct where calcium goes within the body. So an excess calcium leads to arterial calcification. Again, it's the vitamin D helping the calcium absorption. It's the vitamin K2 taking responsibility for directing where the calcium goes once it's in the body. The bottom line is we want the calcium to be deposited into the bones of the skeletal system rather than into the arteries or soft tissue. It may be your kidney, kidney stones. It may be other organs, whatever it may be. But the bottom line is we do not want it to get into the soft tissue. The two major subtypes of this vitamin K2 is MK4 and MK7. Let's look at MK4 briefly. The MK4 form of K2 is predominantly from animal products, and it's in the shape of meat and dairy. This is the grass-fed butters, uh, grass-fed beef steak. Uh, this is salami, prosciutto, uh, pastured pork, liver, uh, egg yolks, uh, chicken, bacon. Now, obviously, many of you are saying that, that's saturated fat. That's horrible for the body. But realize people are throwing the yolks out of their eggs. That's the most nutritious part where the K2 is actually in. Everyone's so worried about saturated fat. Well, guess what? This is in the fat content of these foods. When we look at the MK7 form of this vitamin K2, these are primarily our fermented foods. So you may not be a fan of soy at all, but realize that soybean oil and various processed soy flours are the most damaging commercial foods in existence. So don't worry about the fermented soy. That is a huge difference. There are so many studies that show that these Japanese people who eat lots of this natto or this fermented food, they don't have the osteoporosis like they have here in the Western culture. They don't have the significant cardiovascular disease like they have here in the Western culture as well. But what's also amazing is their skin. From this vitamin K2, they don't have the wrinkles either. Now, other foods that are rich in this vitamin K2 under the MK7 group are their fermented foods like kimchi, sauerkraut, pickles, as well as other preserved vegetables. Now, the big question is, which is better, the MK4 or the MK7? I'm not here to tell you what you should do, but if it was me, 
I go for the MK7. Why? Because it has a much longer half-life. What is a half-life? If you take any drug and that drug becomes 50% of its original strength, that time until it becomes 50% and measured within the plasma within the blood, that is considered the half-life of that particular drug. But MK7 has a much, much longer half-life. That means that we need to take a lot less in micrograms. Generally, each pill is about 90 to 100 micrograms. So average, if you take two of them, a day about 180 micrograms. Approximately 500 to 600 micrograms is kind of like the dose for the MK4, which can go a lot, lot higher. Realize the body will absorb MK4 faster, but you might have to take a lot higher dosage to get those results according to many of the studies. So I know it can be quite complex, and let's go back to those foods again, either those, those grass-fed foods or the natto or the fermented foods. The bottom line is it's always better to get the foods than the supplements, but if you, if you ultimately cannot get those foods because it doesn't work for you, you will, have, you will have to supplement. So after all that being said, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I ask you to uh, subscribe uh, to my channel, Motivational Doc. Great self-help videos, uh, great stuff like neuromuscular, uh, forward head posture, musculoskeletal, great cutting edge nutrition. Check me out on Motivational Doc on Facebook. I ask you to share this video on social media. Why? Because there are hundreds of thousands of people that can really benefit from this. Understand that osteoporosis, heart disease is a major, huge epidemic. And when you take that vitamin D, make sure you're taking K2 with it because you have to have that director to make sure that that calcium gets to where it needs to go. You don't want that accumulating in the soft tissue, in the vessels, in the organs, in the kidneys extremely important. A uh, multitude of studies talking about uh, people who have calcification and by taking vitamin K2, here's one I'm talking about right here, my supraspinatus tendon, uh, most of it's gone. All right. So I'm a big believer in this. Now remember, I love my apple cider vinegar. So uh, that's something I'll, I'll always continue to share. Anyways, I wish everyone many blessings uh, and have a beautiful day or night. May God continue to give you strength, lots of energy. Stay proactive. We'll catch up with you real soon. Make it a great day. Bye-bye now.